my channel. My name is Juanita and today I have a different video for you guys. I started this new series I'm going to call Tea Time Hygiene, which um, is going to be a series of videos that I make talking about dental hygiene as a profession. Um, so I'm going to talk about application process, the program, prereqs, um, how long uh, does it take to complete the degree, and everything you need to know to get started if it's something you want to pursue so if you want to go ahead and listen to what i have to say just keep on watching okay so i had three or four different questions that people asked me um there was a lot more but for this first part of the video i think i really want to focus it on these three four things uh, if not it's going to be very very lengthy and i don't want that so first question um uh, prereqs then application process and then um difference between a dental assistant and a dental hygienist and then also how long does it take to complete the dental hygiene um, degree so i'm gonna start off with um, a little short story about myself so you guys really understand where i come from and maybe if you guys are in the same or in the position that i was maybe this helps you um so um i graduated high school in 2014 and um, during that whole year, I, you know, I was already set for a university. You know, everything that every high schooler does, you know, to get accepted into a dream university. And I had already done that. I had accept, um, I had a scholarship for the university. Um, I got accepted to a pre-nursing program within the university, which is sometimes very hard to do. And um, you know, I was pretty much set to go. Um, I went to a vacation to my hometown in Mexico during that summer of um, high school to university and I literally um, felt like that vacation was not not necessarily a vacation it was more like a reality check for me at least I felt like when I came back I had a very different mindset and I really started thinking um, you know do I have the money to afford to go to this expensive university and I came to the conclusion that I did not have the money. FAFSA was not giving me at all like any help, barely any help compared to the tuition that I had to pay. My parents didn't have enough money to help me. And other and you know, it's kind of weird to put your parents in that position where they have to help you pay for college because it is not the re responsibility to do that. So for me, those three things work life-changing that summer so yeah i knew that i couldn't do it um that money wise i didn't have the money to pay for a four-year uh expensive university and that i wasn't gonna get my parents in debt for my own uh, benefit and um just i decided that i wasn't gonna go i came back from a vacation in august and i was set to go in september and i emailed my school i told them i'm not going and and it was pretty much a blank and blank page for me from that spot because I was pretty much now open to choosing a completely different, you know, future for myself, pretty much. So um, that was the crazy thing about life, you know, that one decision changes everything and it did for me. So um, I still knew I wanted to continue st um, studying, but I chose to go to a, a technical college that um, it's close to my hometown and I started taking just my gen eds because my my mindset was just taking my gen eds and then transferring to a four year um, a technical college has that ability where you can start taking your gen eds they're a lot cheaper um, they work more with your schedule at least for someone who's working full-time or a mother who has children who doesn't have the time to go to a traditional four-year university or someone older who wants to go and continue their schooling the technical college is perfect for that so I started taking my gen eds and within um, taking my gen eds I actually during that time I visited uh, my dentist and all of that and what I started seeing was that I'm seeing a lack of um, diversity within dentistry um, I really didn't see a lot of minorities and I really was thinking you know what can I do to to change that and I started investigating I started um, researching more about the different um, degrees there is within dentistry and uh, first, you know, everybody knows about dental assisting and obviously the dentist, but I when I started, you know Looking into dental hygiene, you know, that was a different 
at least profession that I had no idea, uh, you know, because you go to the dentist and you don't really know who's doing what, you know what I mean? So when I would go to the dentist and get my teeth, my teeth cleaned, you know, I thought it was the dentist doing it, but it's not, it's actually a dental hygienist. So when I started looking into it, I found out that my, my school that I was going to had the program. And that to me was like, like, wow, like, you know, that would be awesome if I can just enroll in that. So I actually, before I even enrolled or even started thinking about it, I went in and shadowed my dental hygienist in my office because I wanted to make sure that this was something I wanted to do. And let me tell you guys, I fell in love and love and love with it because I'm a very independent person. And that was one of the things that the, the, the hygienist mentioned to me. Um, it is a very independent profession where you do see the dentist and the dentist checks your work at the end of the appointment. But throughout the whole day, you know, you're pretty much working by yourself. You're doing your own thing with your patient and that interests me a lot. So I started doing my, my research and I started getting together all of this information about what classes did I need and um, how long was it going to take me and all of that stuff. So for the first question which people asked was which classes were um, you know prereqs in order to apply for the program, I'm gonna go ahead and um, tell you guys right now. All right, then let's go ahead and move into the prereqs because there is um, about seven to 12 different classes that you have to take before you're even considered into the program. Um, the first class was general anatomy and physiology, uh, general organic and biological chemistry was the second, uh, microbiology Biology university medical, intro to psychology, intro to sociology, speech and developmental psychology. Some of these classes actually have prereqs, so you have to take some classes before you can even start taking these. These are the ones that are required for the program to for you to apply. Um, it might take you, you know, more classes to get to this point right here. So, um, so then I actually um, had already taken chemistry in high school and anatomy and physiology. So I did not have to take any other classes before these. Um, I think I only had to take like one math, um, one or two math classes um, that I don't, I think it was like math reasoning and then applied math for chemistry, which were two classes that I took uh, with those, with these seven. So overall we're about nine, 10 classes. Um, some of these were five credits, some of them were four, most of them were four, and then the science were five. So in the uh, science class are, are expensive. So I was paying out of my pocket. I was working full time with a part time in order to afford to pay for my classes. So I did not take a big load of classes each semester. I kind of split them up in a way that I knew I could pay for them and then I knew I could be successful in the classes because that's something you want. You want to make sure that you are doing very well in the classes as well. So um, I split those off in my spring semester of 2015 and my whole year of 2016. So in three semesters, I split those classes and I took them. Uh, my first semester, I was taking those math classes that I was telling you about. And I think I took some other class because my advisor told me to. I really can't remember which class it was. But overall, it was two years of prereqs that I was taking um, in order to get, you know, accepted into the program. Um, so it, I was working full time, um, in the morning I was going in and taking my classes and then at 3 p.m. I worked at my job from 3 to 11 and then I would obviously have to do homework and all of that. So those two years were very, um, very stressful because not only was I working full time during the week, I had a part time on the weekend as a server. So I was working weekends as well. Um, it does the one thing if you really want to do this you have to put your put your everything into it yeah so you can't really think oh i'm going to do dental hygiene and tr try to like think it's going to be easy because it is not it is not going to be easy it's going to be hard and more if you're paying for it yourself so that's what the prereqs are for um applying for the program now the application like i said it it does take a long time to get into the program. Um, that's how just how it works. Um, there's no other way. Uh, maybe two years, I think, is the, the shortest time that I heard girls say that we're waiting to get into the program. Um, I myself was waited 
two years and a half you could say because I applied in the fall of 2015 so in the spring actually in the spring of 2015 and I got accepted in 2018 and um, as well so it was about two to three years that I was waiting to get in um, so yeah it is going to take a long time but it is worth it because I, I love it um, the other question I had um, people asked me was will the application process so obviously you apply you want to make sure that you do it early on I think they start taking applications if I'm not wrong November I think they open up in November of the previous year before you even apply so if you want to get in in the fall of 2020 you need to make sure that you have your um, you know everything like you some of those gen I mean you I think you can you can apply before you even start taking the gen eds, but Make sure that you apply within time. I think in November is when they open up the applications and then they tell you around in March, you know, if you are in the waiting list or if you, you know, how long would it take you and all of that other stuff. Um, then I also had people who asked me and wanted me to talk about the difference between dental assisting and dental hygiene. So I actually did a little research because I am not a dental assistant. Um, so I wanted to really give you guys the accurate information. Dental assisting, it is a one year um, diploma, I think. So it's only 16 credits, which get divided into eight and eight each semester, which, I mean, I really don't know if it's easy or not. Some of the classes, um, two, three classes that you take within dental assisting are also in the dental hygiene program, which is dental health safety, uh, dental materials, and dental radiography. Those three classes, we also had to take our first semester of dental hygiene school, um, and those are already incorporated within dental assisting. But dental assisting is a profession that um, works with the dentist, pretty much assists the dentist in everything that he needs during procedures or within the office. So dental hygiene, uh, we pretty much focus on providing dental cleanings and oral health education to our patients. Um, it's crazy how many people think that, you know, their teeth are not important, but, you know, your mouth is the gateway to your overall health. Um, and there is a lot of articles you can read which relate, you know, different conditions that you might have that could be, um, you know, related to the condition of your mouth. So um, we really work with the patient and improving their own oral health. If they have some kind of condition, we work to improve it or, you know, stop it. And, and if there is, um, if your mouth is in good health, then we keep working with the patient with regular cleanings to keep, to make sure that we have a good um, health and we continue that throughout their life. Classes wise, like I said, there's only three out of the, I think, 80 credits that we take in dental hygiene, um, which are incorporated into dental assisting. But if you are someone who maybe, you know, doesn't have the time or, you know, is not willing to wait the long time it takes to be a dental hygienist, then dental assistant could be a great profession for you. I think they um, have a good pay, good schedule. Um, hours, chapel. <laughs> good, schedule, uh, good schedule hours and you know it's a good entrance into dentistry if that's what you want to do yeah overall dental hygiene is about 80 credits 80 credits total so if someone comes in and tells you that they can finish it in two years um, or I've heard people say oh you know my friend is studying dental hygiene and she finished in one year most likely that's not what they're studying because dental hygiene is going to take a lot a lot more years um, so yeah, that is the difference between dental assisting and dental hygiene. Now, I had someone else ask me, you know, how many years has it taken you? Um, like I said, I took one semester of some um, general classes. Then I started taking my actual prereqs for dental hygiene the spring of 2015. And then I took uh, classes all year of 2016. Uh, 2017 I did not take any classes that year I was getting married as well so I didn't take any classes then I got my letter in the uh, uh, spring in the spring of 2018 Chapel. and that's when I started taking my um, core classes for dental hygiene um, 
I really don't want to make this video very, very long. I know there's still a lot, a lot, a lot of more information that I can share with you guys. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, about time, you know, in within dental hygiene. You know, our class is hard, which class I'm taking. Um, you know, I could also maybe if you live in Wisconsin, I could talk about which schools offer the dental hygiene program um, and things like that that might help you decide if you want to pursue it or if you might not want to do it. So I really hope you guys like this video. I know I talked for a really long time. I know society sets a, a you know a, a timeline for when things need, need to get done like oh you should be finished with your bachelor's at 22 or you should be already married by this age and I really don't agree with that I feel like everybody's timeline is different everybody's life is different there's going to be things within your life that nobody else knows that might you know make you not graduate high school when you you know when you had to or there might be uh, something dramatic that happened to you and you had to drop out of college you know things like that happen so don't think that you need to finish school by a certain time if you like you know you want to go back don't feel discouraged because it might take you a long time you know enjoy the process still live your life while focusing on what you want to do if i would have been in school you know i would have loved to see a video like this because i was looking and there was nothing so <laughs> i really hope you guys like this video give it a thumbs up if you did and i will see you on my next one Bye bye